we're going to build a streamlit front end with three components a button on the left to clear the chat a central column to contain the entire chat and to enter messages and then a third column just to view the internal state and all of the messages and what they look like so, and what we'll see is if we type hi we'll get a different type of message here on the streamlit front end right let's get started all I'm starting with here is a .n file to look after my OpenAI API key so that you can't steal it and use up all my credit. What we're going to need first is a Conda environment. I like creating these Conda environments within the directory. And for this tutorial, we'll use Python 3.11. Lovely. Let's activate it. Now I'm going to install the one package we'll need for this episode, which is Streamlet. Before I forget, I will create a requirements.txt where we'll store all of our dependencies. So now we need to create a file to look after our Streamlit frontend. What I'm planning on including is three columns. Um, in the first column, I want to have any buttons for controlling the chat. Uh, for this, I'm mainly thinking about a clear button so we can reset the chat easily. Then in the main column, we'll have our chat history and input. And a third column, which will contain all of our session state. And the third column we'll see later is particularly useful for trying to debug the chatbot live so we can kind of see exactly what's going on behind the scenes. Right, so that's what we need. Let's start by importing Streamlit and setting up some config. Oh, as ST, there we go. And now I'm gonna set some page config. This is where we can set things like the name of the tab and the icon that displays on the tab. And then also we can display, or we can change how wide the layout is for Streamlit because by default the layout's quite narrow and we would like it to be a bit wider so we can see more on our screen. Starting with the layout. So we want this to be wide layout. And we want a title to be flower shop chat bot. Right. An icon. I'm just gonna copy and paste one from off the screen. There we go, a flame emoji. Let's just confirm that I've done this all right. And we can run this with streamlet run streamlet front end. Okay, so clearly I've got that wrong. What does Streamlit actually want? Let's have a look. Page title and page icon. Okay. Now we don't shouldn't have to reload it. If we just refresh, we can now see that we've got our little emoji and we've got our flower shop chatbot. In fact, whilst we're at it, I'm not a huge fan of this fire, so let's get some, let's get a flowers emoji. Even better, a bouquet. Now, if we rerun, much better, much better. So we've set up our page. Uh, now I want to store something in the streamlit state. Uh, we want to store the message history. And the reason why we can't create it and store it in a variable, or not in this file anyway, is because it will get automatically overwritten. Streamlit refreshes and reruns this script each time it wants to update the site. So let's add, if our message history is not already in the session state, so this is to initialize it, then we're gonna to want to add it. We'll also add a starting message here. This starting message is actually really important with chatbots because it, conditions both the user in terms of telling them about the things they can do um, and how they might then interact with the chatbot but it also conditions the language model so that it knows what to expect and this is one of the ways one of the levers we can pull if things aren't quite going to plan to change the flow of the conversation right now we've got our message history let's create these columns uh, so the left column the main column and the right column what Streamlit takes in for this is the relative widths of the columns. And so we're going to want the main column to be the largest and the other two can be a standard width. 
Starting with a button to activate these columns that we've just created, we can do with left col, and now that becomes the area where Streamlit's going to write GUI elements to. We can use st dot if sorry st dot button, and what this does is it will both create a button, and then it will enter this conditional statement if if condition if the button is pressed. we're going to want to empty that session state. There we go, so that should have cleared it. And if we go back to our front end, there we go, we've got a little button. And we can't see it doing anything just yet, but if we add that, the current message history to the right-hand column temporarily before we create the, the chat in the middle, then we should be able to see something happening. So on that third column, let's create our state. Add in our message history, refresh. There we go, we can see our message and if we click clear, it's gone. Perfect, that's what we want. Now all that's left is we need to actually create our chat input and our chat history. Streamlit's got quite a few pre-built components that we're gonna use to make this really easy. So activate our main column, and we're gonna to need to start by getting the input from the user. So we're gonna go user input equal to st chat input, and then what's the message? Oh no, let's do type here, that's a bit better. And for now, let's just display that. So if there is any user input, then we're gonna to want to display it with st.text. So let's have a look at that. Do we have anything? Yep, we've got it. And if we say hi, it's just gonna print it out. Great. But it's not currently adding it to our message history, so let's do that next. So if we get a user input, let's add it to session state. Lovely. And now if we try again, we can see that, ah, well, there we go. We can see that it's added it onto our message history. So we're now managing the internal state correctly. We just need to get it to display um, as some messages in the main column. So after we've got our chat input, we can then loop over the message history. Oh, loop, sorry. And then we're gonna to want to display it with Streamlit's chat message component. So st.chat message. And what it takes in is the person who has sent the message. So at the moment, we're just gonna use user and then we'll come back and deal with whether it's an assistant or a user message. So starting with the user message, we then have to write to this now newly created message box component. And I'm gonna use Markdown because quite often ChatGPT will respond in Markdown and we wanna take advantage of that and display that to our user. Great, so now we should have, should be able to display all the messages that have been sent in this message history in that central column. Let's have a look. That's a good start, that's a good start. If I add on another message, it appears below. But that feels a bit wrong to me. I think we want the last message to appear first rather than us having to jump between the input and the output. So let's let's reverse this. Um, so let's reverse this. So we're displaying the last message first. So let's go with for i in range, zero to the length, there we go. So now we've got an index for the chat messages and we can iterate backwards through them with minus i, there we go. So we're going down backwards through the message history. Let's try that again. Well, it's a good start, it hasn't broken, but it's still displaying them one after the other. What's gone on there? Minus i, minus one, that's why. We're starting at zero. 
really actually let's start from one and go up to the length of the message history plus one and then we can just start with minus i down here i think that's a bit bit clearer let's try again great much better now we need to sort out this issue which is that we've got we can't tell the difference between our user messages and our assistant messages. The first step is associating this message with the person who sent it. So we'll create a dictionary with two keys, one for content and another for type. This is going to be an assistant message. And then when we add new messages, we're going to add dictionaries with the same keys so content that's going to be our user input and a type which is going to be a user message lovely now the user message instead of just defaulting to user here we're going to want to start by getting the the message this message and we've already already done the indexing down here. So now we've got this message and we can now get the specific user from this message. Type. And now display the content separately. Now, as we iterate over the entire message history, it will deal with both getting the message type, whether it's an assistant or user message and getting the content and um, choosing the type of message box separately from writing to that message box. This is this chat message. This takes in a few different types. I believe it takes in assistant AI or user. Um, so we're just choosing, choosing our words carefully here by using assistant and user to make sure that it's consistent with what chat message expects. Let's give it a whirl. And there we go. We can see that we've got a separate style for our AI messages compared to our user messages, which are in red. And that's all we've got for today. We've built a three column streamlit front end, which is going to be the start of our customer services assistant. And I'll be back in the next episode to set up a vector database so that the chatbot can search through, uh, and recommend products and search through um, frequently asked questions so that we can present reliable and relevant information to the user when they ask. And that's all. Thanks for watching.